Welcome back, everybody, to PyBytes YouTube. And today, a video about caching in Python. So I'm going to explain how it works and show some common ways how you can use caching to significantly speed up your code. So let's dive straight into it. So I prepared a little bit of boilerplate, and then let's let's actually demonstrate how caching works, right? So uh, typically, you would keep an internal data structure, um, and usually that's a dictionary. And you can store intermediate results in that dictionary. So for example, if you have a function here that takes one or more arguments and returns an int, um, and we kind of fake that this is going to be a very slow function. So we put a sleep of two seconds here, right? And the only thing it's going to really do is return um, a sum of the arcs, right? And then in the main block, I call it twice with um, arguments one to three, which of course then would uh, return six. So this will take two seconds every time, right? So uh, four seconds runtime. So what if we want to speed this up by caching the results? So we can actually cache the results in this dictionary. And what would the keys and values then be? Well, for example, we can make the arcs um, as long as they're hashable, you can make that the key and the result the value, right? So if we, instead of returning the result straight away, we're going to store it in a variable. And before returning it, we're going to cache it, right? And the key again is the arcs, which is just the tuple of integers and the value is the result. So every time I call this, it's going to store the results in a dictionary. So that's the storing part. There are two parts of this, right? Storing and retrieving. Now, the real benefit here is that you can now first look in the cache. And if the key is in the cache, then you can just return the, the result, the value, right? So if arcs in cache, we can return cache arcs. So retrie we retrieve that result. And then we don't hit that sleep. Of course, that sleep is silly, but that's just to uh, simulate an expensive function, right? So we can also print, retrieve cache, and we can print store cache. So we kind of see what's going on, right? So if the arcs are in the cache, then it uh, retrieves it and returns it straight away. So then you don't hit the sleep and you save those two seconds basically, right? If it's not in the cache, then it's going to calculate, it's going to store it in the cache and return it. So if I now run it, it's actually two seconds. Uh, you, you trust me on this. <laughs> you can also time it, of course. Yeah, so it's around two seconds. And uh, the, here, the two seconds were basically spent here, right? As the, the first calculation and storing it. And the second time we ran it, the retrieve cache was almost instantly. And we can use our timer decorator, see the video here, to actually show that uh, more specifically. So I hear if the timer decorator or timing, and then I can apply that decorator here. Again, look at the linked video for how you write a timing. Decorator. Then we can be a bit more explicit about this. So the store cache, the first time we ran it, it took two seconds. And the second time we ran it, it's we'll see that minus zero six. This is this is basically almost instantly, right? So that's how caching works. Um, of course, you don't have to write this from scratch. You can just use what's in the standard library. So here again, another example. Um, let's just run this without the cache decorator. So I'm going to comment this decorator. So it would just run over and over again and do these Fibonacci calculations over and over again. And then if you call that for 35 times, it should actually be pretty slow. So it's definitely... Uh, doing a lot of calculations again and again, and it takes like almost four seconds. However, if we um, import func tools and use the cache decorator, which before was LRU cache, um, now you can just use cache. 
in newer Python versions. Then it's going to cache the results in a dictionary, and this is going to be much faster. It's almost instant, right? So uh, that's also where you see how dramatically caching can spin up your code. Also, just quickly, just to confirm that uh, the dictionary thing I taught is actually what's happening here. So I can use my Pice alias uh, that uses the inspect module, see video here, to um, dump the source code. And then I type that into Vim. So here's the func tools source code. And if we search for cache, We can see kind of how that works. Of course, this is way more complicated than my simplified explanation. I'm just trying to find where it actually is. So you have to look at LRU cache wrapper. And here's the actual uh, cache dictionary. And yeah, here it gets the key. If it's in there, you got an early return. And if the key is not in the dictionary, then it calculates, does the work, calls the function, and stores the results. So that's actually pretty similar to what I uh, showed in my simplified uh, version. But that's all um, available in a decorator in the standard library. So you don't have to write all that code yourself. So definitely use this. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, another example of caching is in our PyBytes search tool. See this uh, short? And um, yeah, we also use it for our uh, PyBytes command line search tool. Um, so you can use the request cache module. And the only thing you really have to do is to install the cache. So I give it a cache DB path, so a local SQLite database, and an expiration. So this cache expires after, I believe it's, well, you can configure that if you want, but um, by default, it's one day in seconds, which is, um, yeah, one day, right? So if I, and we have a tip on this as well, right? On request cache. So if I go to the command line and I run all, which is my alias to go into the search tool, activate the virtual environment. By the way, uh, I have a video on shell aliases. It's linked here. Uh, and then call the search tool, right? And if I call it the first time for say requests, so search for all the PyBytes content on request. It takes a while, right? Because it's it has been 24 hours since I last used this tool. So now it has to refresh the cache. So keep in mind, it's looking for articles, byte exercises, podcast episodes, tips, videos. So it's actually reaching out to five feeds, which takes a little bit, right? But what happens if I call it a second time? It's instantly, because now, instead of going out over the network to these individual feeds, it's using my local SQLite database. And that's why I wanted to show this example as well, here in the search repo, um, that instead of an in-memory dictionary, here we actually use a file-based cache. We use a SQLite database, which is a file on the file system. And that's another type of cache you can use. And as you've seen, when I ran these uh, commands the second time, it was way faster, like, like 10, 20 times faster. So again, it just really drives home the point that if you can use caching, you can dramatically speed up your code. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you got an idea how caching works, um, where it's used in the standard library. Uh, for example, func tools you can leverage, but you can also leverage a package like request cache uh, to use a SQLite database. Uh, and with that said, thanks for watching, and tomorrow we'll be back with another video. Cheers.